Hey, hello, my friends. My name is Charles Collins, and welcome to Together We Grow's Aquaponic, Hydroponic, and Traditional Sustainable Gardens. Um, I'm really excited today because um, we've been actually working on a different garden on the south side of Tucson, and it's a garden run by the Las Vistas Community Coalition. It's a beautiful organization where it's a bunch of young adults who are getting together to help provide nutrient, nutritious fresh produce to what's considered um, a, a food desert in our city. The idea is that these box stores, and I always mention the box stores, they want reasons for you to come into their stores. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go to box stores because goodness knows that's part of why we have this country, the ease of access and ease of ways to get means to get access to food. But it's just a lot healthier if you grow your own. And you can do it on your own. Not only will it bring you together, but like the Las Vistas um, Community Coalition, it'll bring your neighbors together too. And I can't think of anything more positive and better than that. So without further ado, we'll talk about a couple of a couple of more things, and then we're gonna get to move transferring those fish. We'll talk about a little bit a little bit about tilapia while we're doing it. You guys ready? I am. I also highly encourage you guys, if you haven't done so, um, please take a look at some of our past videos where we actually go over through some of the misconceptions about tilapia. We clear a lot of them up. Also, um, I have a friend of mine, his name is Sam Fleming. He's associated with 100 Gardens out in North Carolina. Um, give him a chance to come up on Facebook, look him up on um, Google. Pardon me, you can Google him, 100 Gardens. Um, he goes a lot into detail of clearing up about a lot of the misconceptions um, regarding tilapia, um, especially about with them being farm raised, where they come from, where they come from and you know like he and I talked about this a long time ago and when we did it really sparked a great conversation because um some of the misconceptions that people have and you see me trying to hold back a smile right now and I actually am because some of the misconceptions people have are actually hilarious <laughs> now another thing I'd like to note before we go ahead and extract these guys and get them ready to transfer to their new home is that you very rarely hear Europeans or um, people from Africa, people from Asia ever say the, or repeat the misconceptions about tilapia because most of them are globally traveled. And this is nothing against my US friends, but a lot of us aren't really that globally traveled. One of the misconceptions about tilapia, okay, um, why is it that I've never seen anyone catch a fresh tilapia? Well, because the original names are Nile River tilapia and they're originally um, found in the Middle East and in Africa. So unless you uh, actually traveled or frequented one of those countries, you wouldn't have heard of them. Um, they're also very popular in Asian and South Pacific countries. So if you're over there, you've actually also heard of them as well. I know it's hard to believe that we don't understand and we don't know it all in America, but guess what, my friends? It's actually true, we don't. The world is a huge place. There's so much to learn. Another misconception is that tilapia are bottom feeders or that tilapia have to give them some type of meat. Well, here's the thing. Primarily tilapia are, they feed off of algae and they feed off of vegetable. They feed off of vegetable scraps found in the water. That's what they eat. And if there's not enough of it, well, fish are going to eat what fish are going to eat. And when it comes to tilapia eating crap, in nature, tilapia don't eat crap. They're not bottom feeders. They actually travel along the, um, I think it's the midstream and on the water so they're very rarely on the bottom they're very rarely on top they're so smart though that if you do have them at home you can train them they can be accustomed to coming up to the top of the water and actually feeding from your hand that's how fish are smart are now i know if the fish are that smart i know they're smart enough to know to eat that food from my hand and they're smart enough not to eat crap unless you force feed them now in that case who's the real piece of garbage the tilapia or the human i got a quick surprise this is actually kp from the um last <laughs> From the last piece, this community <laughs> This guy, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. I just explained to you guys. <laughs> you're, you're brilliant. Guys, a second ago, the work that he and his team are doing over there for the neighborhood. So um, you guys are familiar with the system that we built over here. And this is actually a two-tier um, aquaponic system. And for the Las Vistas system, we actually built a four-tier four -tier aquaponic system. So four times the food growth they're going to get actually in their system. Um, we're going to take this over to the back end now. We're actually going to start um, extracting these fish. And we got a nice size cooler. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, guys, please Google the Las Vistas Community Coalition if you get a chance. Um, if any of you are able to help out, um, we appreciate all the help we can get. Plant that first seed. Together we grow. Let's take this to the back. Let's check out some fish. Come on. Together we grow. So here we go, guys. Um, when it comes to our tilapia, you need a fitting net for a fitting size tilapia. And ours aren't actually the smallest. So um, give me a quick second. Um, we're not even gonna look for the smallest or the biggest when it comes to this because this is an adoption process. Unlike myself, who for the first couple of years, I was actually eating the tilapia. 
um, I believe with the um, Las Vistas Community Coalition, what they intend on doing is they're using this as a teaching example for the community and for the kids. So um, without any further ado, let's get to do a little bit of fishing. I always like to say before I do this, um, um, I thank the fish for the presence. I thank the fish for all the nutrition and happiness that they brought into my life. And I hope that it's continued success and continued happiness that they bring for those whose lives in which they choose to, which they um, intend on encountering in the future. And that would be the coalition. So let's go, guys. Let's see what we get. We do it for the kids. There you go. Here is our first one. Okay, now here we go. Let's see if we can take our camera, turn it down just a little bit. There we go. Oh, this is a beauty too. All right. And this is a Nile River tilapia. Let me see if we can get that angle in a little bit better. There we go. And this is over a plate size one. I figure this one is about a pound and a half. And this is a male. Um, the eyes are nice and clear. The skin is just beautiful. Um, this is just honestly a gorgeous fish. Uh, I'm not going to keep her out of water, keep, keep them out of water too much longer. Because as you can see, after you see my arm, you can see how big the fish is right there. So I'm not going to keep them out of water much longer. So what I'm going to do is actually have a bucket of the um, tank water right here. So I'm going to take this beautiful buddy right here. I'm just going to set him right down here. Let me tilt this up just a little bit. Now, is that, yeah, that's him, that's him splashing down there. It's all good, though. Uh, we're actually going to transplant him over into a larger container in a minute, and then we're going to get him moved over. So it's not going to be just him. It's going to be him and three or four of his pals, uh, maybe a couple of females in there, and hopefully we can get a nice new population of tilapia growing from the other side of town. A be another beautiful thing about our tilapias over here is that although that, that seeing that they are over two years old, they have been through the hottest summer and the coldest winter in the history of Tucson. So if you've ever seen tilapia built for Tucson for the desert, it's these bad boys right here. Let me get the transplant and a few more. Guys, stick with me. Well, wow, take a look at this, guys. Here you go. And here are our next two. And these are actually, if you take a look at them, these are actually much smaller. Um, like we said, we've had these fish for over two years. So um, these guys are babies. These guys are well over, like these guys are maybe like six months old, something like that. So yeah, these guys were born here, probably second or third ger generation in here. How cool is this? Um, you could go ahead and open that up for me. We're gonna take these guys, we're gonna put them into the transfer tank as well. Are they male or female? Um, these are, I can't really tell because these are still super, super small. There we go. We're gonna go for one more. Pardon me. Let's lift this up. I love the live action scenes, guys, because where else are you going to get this? We are going to go for one or two more, and then we're going to get these guys going. Um, before we do that, I'd like to knock down another one of the um, misconceptions about tilapia. Now, I'll show you again after we put the last one in, but um, there's a rumor that tilapia does not have skin and it does not have bones. I'm not allowed to use the S word because I don't like it or the D word, but that is some of the S D S stuff I've ever heard in my life. This had bones, man. Tilapia had bones. Have you ever tried to gut one? It's a bony fish, my man. And of course they have skin. I just showed you a picture they have skin. Um, you got to stop the misconceptions. Just because it's on YouTube, just because it's on Google, Google doesn't mean it's true, dude. Look into it. Look into it. This is one of the most um, delicious fish that on the planet. This is the fourth most popular fish that's consumed on the planet. And it's not just because it's easy to grow. It's because it's easy to grow. It's delicious. And it's there for us. Let's get these other fish. And we're going to figure it out. We're going to finish it up from there. Let's go. Double take. When I say dip, when, when you say dip, I dip. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yeah, he ain't going. Nope. Okay, but I got him. I'm glad I got him. I'm glad I can show you guys this, dude. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Woo! This is Hank. Hank is always the first one up on Tank every day to get his food at the very top. Hank's not going anywhere because Hank's my guy. <laughs> Hank is a pretty heavy fish. I know you can't see him through the net, and this isn't the Discovery Channel. So I'm not gonna hire the wildlife like that. But Hank is like, dude, if you don't get your hands off me, Hank is definitely a dude, by the way. And Hank is not a happy Hank right now. No, he is not. So um, 
Let me get my little... <laughs> I wish I had the scale on so I could weigh Hank. Oh my goodness, Hank is huge. Hold on, guys. All right, guys. So here, got you. All right, guys. So all right, guys. You know I don't take out the um, the um, the um, bloopers. So um, man, the sun is really on a black side, on a dark side of me. I look like one of those figures on Mortal Kombat that you haven't figured out who it is yet. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Let me. You never know what you're gonna get in our videos, folks. Let's get this. <laughs> Oh, by the way, we're all professionals. Like all of us are professionals in what we do. And I realize I need you guys to understand it. But without humor, there's nothing in life, man. I'm telling you that. Exactly. Let's get this last fish. You can't laugh, it doesn't mean anything. Tell him, JP, man. Woo! That first one I showed you was a male, right? Yeah. This is a female. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful this girl is. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, she's just a rolling. She's like, man, if you don't get me out this net. I know, guys, I wish I could really show, but look at the colors. She is so gorgeous. I raised these babies from day one, man. How awesome is that? And now they're going to a new home. And they get to hang at the Las Vistas Community Coalition. They're going to be able to help so many little kids learn about fresh food, how to take care of yourself, growing fresh produce, doing things that people don't think is possible in the desert, but you can because you dare to do it. Can we go ahead and get that open? Let's go over there. There we go. There we go. Let's send you to your home, mama girl. There you go. So there you go, my friends. Um, these beautiful fish are going to be heading to their new home across town on the south side of Tucson. The water's all set for them. Um, please do look into, um, if you get a chance, look into Sam um, Fleming, once again, 100 Gardens. Also listen to, um, check out um, my friend um, Rob Gray, um, Rob Bob, the um, gardener. And um, I'm telling you because he can give you all the tips about how to get quick ways of getting your system cycled in. A lot of things that we do over here are really, um, they're, um, they're on the experimental side of things. But I really want you guys to learn how to do this from the basics. So always check with the pros online. Like I said, um, if I remember, I'll put a link down to them in the on bottom. In the meantime, we're going to get these fish transferred to their new homes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know I did. It's a little bit breezy out here. So if you can get out there, get your gardening done, take care of yourself, stay, eat, stay hydrated, and don't forget, plant that first seed so that together we'll grow. Peace and blessings, my friends.